Lesson 2-3, Polynomial Equations. The polynomial function is in the form that. Notice all these ANs, they're all coefficients, numbers multiplied by the variable. The whole groups are called terms. They're separated by addition or subtraction. A zero down here at the end is the constant term because there's no variable. The degree is the highest exponent. And the leading coefficient is the coefficient of the term with the highest exponent. The graphs of polynomial functions are continuous. No holes, smooth, and nice rounded turns. No sharp corners. If we're going to graph polynomial functions, you look at the end behavior. Uh, they always go up or down, up towards positive infinity or down towards negative infinity at either end of the graph. And they can all be classified in four ways. If we have an even degree with a positive leading coefficient, both ends go up. So we'd say this rises to the left and it rises to the right. If the leading coefficient is negative, then it's upside down and we'd say it falls left and falls right. But if it's an odd degree, one end goes each direction. If it's an odd degree with a leading coefficient, it falls left and it rises to the right. And if the leading coefficient is negative, it's upside down, where it rises to the left and it falls to the right. All right, so we look at this one. We need to know our degree. Our degree is three, so it is an odd degree. And this is the leading coefficient. So that's a positive leading coefficient. So we have to see odd degree positive leading coefficient. All right, that is this one right there. So the end behavior is it falls to the left and it rises to the right goes down on the left, up on the right. Polynomial functions have zeros. What we mean by that is if x equals a is a zero, then x equals a is a solution to the function when it equals zero. So a zero is just the value of x that makes the function equal zero. Just the value of x when the function equals zero. That is the zeros. If they're real numbers, a zero then would be an x-intercept. It's where it crosses the x-axis. And x minus a would be a factor of the function. If we have degree n, then there can be at most n zeros, and they can be repeated. And there can be at most n minus 1 turning points. So you have the same number of zeros as degree, but one less turning point. And a turning point is where it goes from going up or down to the other ways. So that's a turning point, and that's a turning point. By looking at a graph, you can tell what type of zeros we have. 
Let's start with the right. If our graph crosses the x-axis, we have this nice x-intercept there, it is a zero with odd multiplicity, which means it exists uh, odd number of times. It's a zero once, or it's a zero three times, or it's a zero five times. If your graph touches the x-axis but doesn't cross, so it's a minimum or a maximum at the x-axis, that is a zero with even multiplicity, which means that um, the number is a zero twice or four times or six times. And you'd get that, let's say, if you had a factor x minus three squared, or x minus two, I guess, to match the graph, we would get x equals two twice if we took each factor equal to zero because you'd have the same factor twice. That's what it would look like. If, say over here, your graph goes towards the x-axis and then bends away from it without touching it, so it's not touching, you get two imaginary zeros there. So this graph has at least five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. All right, for our first example, let's find all the zeros. So we'll make this equal to zero, and then we need to solve it. Let's solve it by factoring. I can factor out a t, because there's a t in everything. Let's leave t to the fourth, six t squared, and nine. Let's see if we can factor more. This middle is three terms, which we can factor with two sets of parentheses. What times what is t to the fourth? And what times what is nine? And let's go with negative three and negative three. And then we can check. That would be negative three t squared. And negative three t squared is negative six t squared. That is the middle. So that was correctly factored. Now, we can take each factor equal to zero. So we get t equals zero. And when you take a square root when you're solving, don't forget the plus and minus. And of course, this other one is exactly the same. So our zeros are zero, square root of three, and negative square root of three. How many times do we have the zero? Once. How about the square root of three? The multiplicity was twice. And how about the negative square root of three? It's also twice because we had it once twice. So how many of those did we have? We had five total zeros. The degree was five. All right. Now we are supposed to graph this. To make a graph of the function, I'd use my calculator to make a table of values. When x is negative 3, y is negative 108. When x is negative 2, y is negative 2. Negative 1 and f negative 4. 0, 0. 1 and 4. 2 and 2. And 308. But let's not forget our other zeros. We have the square root of 3. So when x is the square root of 3, which is about 1.6, we're at a 0. And when x is negative square root of 3, about negative 1.6, we're also at a 0. So we'll need that when we put it on our graph. All right, negative 3, negative 108 is way down there. 
negative 2, negative 2, negative 1.6 and 0, negative 1, negative 4, 0, 0, 1, 4, 1.6, 0, 2, 2, and 3, 108 would be way up there. So our graph's going to come up, go through there, come back down, up, down, up, and then way towards the top there. And there's a quick sketch of our graph. All right, let's find the x-intercepts of this polynomial function. So to start with the x-intercepts, the x-intercepts occur when y is 0. So we'll make it equal to 0. And since they're all multiplied together, we can use the zero product property and just make each of the factors equal to 0. And solve for each of those. So you can see the x-intercepts are 0, negative 2, and 3. As points, that would be 0, 0, negative 2, 0, and 3, 0. The y-intercept, you let x equal 0. So let x equal 0. You get y is 0, so the y-intercept would be 0, 0. What is the least possible degree of the function shown? Well, we can use x-intercepts and turning points. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4 x-intercepts. So those are four zeros. Notice on each of them, the graph is passing through the x-axis to the other side. So remember, if it comes down and touches and goes back, there's two there. But well, we don't have that case. They're all passing through. So we have four zeros. And how many turning points? One, two, three turning points. So remember, the degree equaled the zeros, and the degree minus 1 equaled the turning points. So it looks like our degree is going to be 4, because of the four zeros, and we have one less turning point than degree, so if our degree is 4, we get the three turning points that we have. Therefore, our degree must be 4.